I recently had a patient who we were able to provide a very unique therapeutic option for. This is actually a very interesting situation of a young woman who was fortunate to have found a defect in her heart at an early age when something could be done about it. She was found to have what's called an atrial septal defect, uh, which if it prolonged could have caused severe heart failure and heart problems. I was having heaviness in my chest um, for about two weeks and it would start around 10 o'clock at night, but then I noticed the, the second week it was starting earlier and earlier. And on that Wednesday, it was like at 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning, and it got to the point where I couldn't even breathe. So I went um, and had my blood pressure taken, and it was very high, and it was suggested that I go to the hospital immediately. And I had already had an appointment with Dr. Perot for the following Tuesday, but it they said it couldn't wait, so I showed up at the hospital and they did tests and um, they uh, saw that I had the hole in my heart and that was making the heart work, I guess, harder and giving me the heaviness. When the patient presented to the emergency room, she had shortness of breath and chest pain and at Holy Cross we routinely do cardiac CT to determine if the patient needs to be admitted to the hospital for further invasive testing. And the cardiac computed tomography or cardiac CT demonstrated the following. So we are looking three-dimensionally inside the heart and as we pan in through, through the atrial chambers, we can see that there is clearly a hole in the heart and we're looking directly from one chamber to the other when there should be a frank separation. So this patient has a communication in what's called the atrial septum, essentially a hole in her heart, and so she's having mixing of blood flow between oxygenated and non-oxygenated blood, causing her to have shortness of breath. And then we went ahead and did a cardiac catheterization to further assess the severity of the problem. And it turned out it was fairly severe. This kind of structural heart problem, however, is now being addressed by a whole new generation of physicians, interventional cardiologists called structural heart disease specialists uh, who can now address these in the adult population. We did a number of measurements uh, using ultrasound or echocardiography of the heart to see exactly what size the defect was. And here you can see there's what's normally a very uh, intact piece of tissue that separates one chamber from another uh, where there is tissue that's missing and part of what happens is that blood can freely flow across that abnormal communication and over time this leads to overload of the heart and can lead to congestive heart failure. Uh, in the past these defects have required surgery uh, to correct uh, but because of advancements in catheter-based techniques, we were able to repair her heart defect here in the cardiac catheterization lab. When we are performing the procedure, one of the key steps is to try to understand the size of this abnormal communication in the heart so that we can choose an appropriate sized device to close the defect. Once we know what size defect we're dealing with, we're able to deliver the closure device through a catheter that is placed through the groin into a vein and into the heart. Uh, this is a clamshell device that is uh, made out of a material known as nitinol uh, that has memory and uh, reconfigures to its original shape. This is what the device looks like under fluoroscopy after it's been deployed with the atrial septal defect being in between the device and now being uh, sealed shut. And so this is a picture, an echo picture of the device after it's been deployed uh, where the hole used to be here uh, in this piece of tissue in between the two atria but now that hole is sealed with this device uh, that stays in place and becomes part of her heart over the next couple of months. So this is another way to look at the device and its effectiveness. Initially because the device is porous, uh, there is some communication between the two heart chambers, but as time progresses and a small layer of skin grows over the device, it will completely seal off the communication between the two heart chambers. 
Um, so they went and they put this device in, and last night was my first night since it. I had absolutely no heaviness. I really did. I couldn't believe that they did what they did. And it was minor discomfort, minor. And it was well worth it. It's, it's amazing. So in the end, we were really able to provide this young woman with a tremendous treatment. What is rewarding with her is not that we affected her life right now, because this is a woman who had fairly no symptoms related to this defect. But the rewarding part was that we, that we feel that we were able to pre prevent any kind of future heart problems. And that was a tremendous accomplishment. And that's why we're fortunate uh, to have that ability to do this kind of procedure here at Holy Cross. Mm -hmm.